In this video we'll deal with a very common situation which is something rolling along the ground. Now there are basically two different sorts of models you can use to deal with this. One is to deal with the torques, the rotational energy, the sort of things we've been talking about in these videos. That's going to be most relevant when the thing that's rolling is very massive and most of the effort goes into starting it rolling or stopping it rolling. On the other hand, if you have a lightweight thing, particularly a squishy thing, rolling a long distance without much force, in that case the most important thing is going to be how the wheel or ball deforms, i.e. rolling resistance, the friction. In which case you want to use the techniques we covered back in the contact forces lesson. But for the moment, let's worry, let's assume that the thing that's rotating is relatively massive and not very squishy, so we can ignore rolling resistance. Most of our effort has to go into figuring out how much of a push we need to get it rolling, how much of a push we need to stop it rolling. Okay, so let's imagine this ball or wheel or whatever it is, is rolling on the ground. Now if it's rolling, not skidding, then the part of the wheel that's touching the ground is not sliding along the ground, but is at rest. If the centre of the ball or wheel is moving at velocity v, that means that relative to the centre, the rim must be moving at v backwards at the bottom, and therefore 2v forwards. Now that tells us the angular velocity. Because remember, the angular velocity times the radius gives you the velocity of the rim, in this case relative to the centre. So what that tells you is that if something is rolling, its angular velocity must be equal to the linear velocity of the centre divided by its radius. Which kind of makes sense. A very big wheel doesn't need to do very many revolutions per second to go at a particular speed. A small wheel needs to be spinning very fast to get you along at a decent rate. OK, let's do a worked example. Let's assume we have a grassy slope and we've got a soccer ball and we let go of it up here and it rolls down and we want to know how fast it's going at the bottom and the height of the centre of mass changes by, let's say, h. We'll give it a radius r. OK, well, let's try modelling the situation. Um, in terms of forces, there's going to be a friction force here, which is going to push upwards on the wheel, and so therefore apply a torque to get it rotating. There's also going to be gravity, which is pushing downwards at a normal force. We could try and calculate this using those sort of things. So we could look at what the torque is and therefore work out the rate of angular acceleration. The trouble is the slope is curving, so that torque's going to be constantly changing, the angle's going to be constantly changing, so that would be a relatively complicated and unpleasant thing to do. We'd probably need a computer to solve it. However, situations like this, we can often use energy. Let's draw some energy pie charts. To begin with, it's not rotating, it's not moving. All the energy is going to be in the form of potential energy. Down at the bottom, the potential energy has gone away, but there's going to be some rotational energy and some kinetic energy. For situations like this, you can break the energy down into the kinetic energy of the centre of mass and the rotational energy about the centre of mass. Now I've drawn the rotation being smaller than the kinetic energy, but it could be the other way around, I really don't know. There'll be some mix of the two. So, as usual for energy problems, what we do is we write down an equation for the energy at the beginning, an equation for the energy at the end, and set them equal to each other. So at the beginning, the energy is just mgh, if we define potential energy zero down here at the bottom, which is probably a reasonable thing to do. It doesn't matter where you pick your zero point, the answer will come out the same. OK, now what's the energy over here? We're going to get a half mv squared plus a half i omega squared. 
normal equation for kinetic energy from the centre of mass and the normal equation for rotational energy around the centre of mass. Now we know that omega is V over R because it's rolling, not slipping. So that's equal to half m v squared plus half i v over r squared. Now for a soccer ball, that's a hollow ball. We can look up the moment of inertia for that. And for a hollow ball, the moment of inertia is 2 thirds m r squared. So put that in. We get the total energy at the end is a half mv squared plus a half times two thirds m r squared times v squared over r squared. So the radii cancel out and we get half m v squared plus one third m v squared. So in fact the kinetic energy is a little bigger than the rotational energy. We can check right now the units work. mv squared for both looks pretty sensible. Um, so this diagram is about right. OK, so setting those equal to each other, we find that mgh equals what's a half plus a third. That's going to be, um, we'll call it a sixth. This is going to be three sixths and two sixths. So it's going to be right up to five sixths m v squared. So rearranging we get v squared, masses cancel, equals 6g h over 5. So v equals root 6g h over 5. We can check units. G is meters over second squared times h, which is height in meters. So it's going to be meters squared over second squared. Squared, that's meters per second, which is velocity, so that makes sense. Functional form. If you make the slope high, it will roll faster, which makes sense. If you make G, gravity stronger, it will roll faster, which makes sense. So this looks plausible. Now we are neglecting rolling resistance here. So this is probably good for a nice hard ball on a firm surface or if the slope is quite big so that most of the effort goes into getting it spinning. And If on the other hand it was rolling along a large uh, grassy oval with thick grass and the wheel was a, the ball was a bit squishy and hadn't been pumped up well, then we'd have to factor in the rolling resistance which would make the calculation much harder.